after you install Linux Mint for the first time, your system should restart and you're going to be presented with the login screen. So go ahead and enter your password. And there's a few things you need to do post installation. The first thing most people would do will be to go and apply the updates. But I'm going to do something else today. I've actually installed a second drive as my main storage drive. So we're going to format this uh, for the Linux file partition system, which is ext4. You can skip this step and go to apply the updates if you only have one drive. All right. So the first time you're going to be logging on, you're going to be presented with this uh, Welcome to Linux Mint logging screen. You can untick that if you don't want this again. Otherwise, go ahead and close that and let's go ahead and format the drive. Click on bottom left menu icon and uh, type in disk to open the disk utility or disk manager. Right now, I've got two drives on there. The first one, uh, the 240 gigabyte SSD where the Linux Mint is installed. And the second one is my 2TB hard drive, which I pulled from a Windows system. Currently, it's not mounted, as in it's asleep. So if you need to use it for whatever reason, you can just click on this triangle to mount it. But since I'm going to format it, it doesn't matter anyway. So I pre-formatted this before as ext4 because I want to use this uh, drive exclusively for the Linux system. But if you need to use it for a different system, then uh, let's go to the next stage. Now to format it, just make sure it's selected and then click on this cog wheel. Go ahead and, and uh, click on format partition. I'm going to call it Linux uh, storage. You name it, whatever you want. And if you want to completely wipe it secure, you can uh, click on that, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to leave it as default because I want this to be used internal disk for Linux system only ext4 filing system. If you need for Windows, click on this one or other ones, click on the fat version. Okay, I'm going to leave it as such. Click on next and warning all the data will be lost. Okay, and format and asking for your password. Go ahead and enter that and give it a few seconds. Like I said, if you don't need to do this, skip and go to the update, which is step two. But I highly recommend most people to put your OS on one drive and your main storage on a different drive. Okay, it's completed. And again, it says not mounted because it's just been formatted. If you want to mount it, you can just click on this triangle and there you go. It's popped up and right now it's completely empty. So we're going to close that and go ahead to the next step, which is going to be step one for most people. We're going to go do the updates. Three ways to approach the updates is one, you can click down here. It says welcome to the update manager or you can bottom click left here on the menu button and type in update and that will come up or third way you can do the same thing bottom left and go to administration scroll down and update manager and this will pop up all right so welcome to the update manager and just click on ok which is a welcome screen now you're gonna have two pop-ups please set up system snapshots we'll do that in a few seconds and then do you want to switch to a local mirror you can do that so go ahead and click on yes and asking for your password once again now there is main and then there is base go ahead and click on main and it's going to look for mirrors near you which is going to be the fastest way for you to download stuff so give it a few seconds to search it but usually it's going to be the first top one i'm going to go ahead and select that and click on apply and then you can also do that for base same thing and it's going to search for the fastest one after it's done click on the top one which is this one and click on apply now you should click on ok to update your apt cache on that note sometimes there might be some issues here if he hasn't been able to find a ppa repository he might tell you that it's not updated whatever if there's any issue, which right now, for example, is giving me an issue, and you can click on details to see there is one PPA didn't find the package. So there's two ways to do this. You can actually go ahead and remove this PPA uh, manually, or what you could do here, um, you could restore the default setting back to the previous uh, mirror, and you have to also press OK to update the APT cache again. It's not a major issue. Don't worry about it too much. Hopefully you won't have this issue. So once this is done, go ahead and uh, cross that. It's going to ask you to update a new update manager. Basically, there's one available. Click on apply the update. Asking you for your password again.
And now we've got the new update manager. Uh, this um, update local mirror is still here. I'm gonna click on no, can't be bothered at this stage. And uh, all the updates are now selected. So what you do, you just click on install updates. And it's gonna make the following changes. Clear ahead and okay, ask password again. That's fine. So first it's gonna download all the updates and then it's gonna install. So give it a few seconds or minutes depending on your location. All right, so this took a few minutes. Now the system is up to date and now we move on to the next step. Number three is to set up a system snapshot. Click on okay, asking you for your password again. So what happens here is you want to create a system image of your whole basically installation. If there's any problem, you can restore it. So go ahead and leave it on our sync. Click on next. And it's gonna estimate the system size, which hopefully is not gonna to be too big. Now this is why uh, at this stage, I said that I would use a different drive altogether for Linux not on the same drive because it does not make sense to store your uh, image on the same drive for redundancy purpose. Now here, there are two drives. It's picked up my main one, which is SDA2, the sand disk, and the other one. Of course, I'm gonna choose SDB2 because I want the image to be on there. So I'm gonna click on next. Now, depending on your disk size, you may decide to do daily snapshots. That's really up to you. And then it's going to do five uh, retention per day, but that's going to eat up a lot of storage space. For me, I'm going to choose monthly and two snapshots per month. That should be adequate for me, but feel free to try something else if you want. Okay, click on next. Keep clicking on next. Once you click on finish, it should automatically create a first snapshot. But if it doesn't, for my one, I'm just gonna create one and show you. So there you go, that's what's gonna happen. And uh, depending on your size and uh, speed of your SSD, etc., it might take a few minutes, just let it do its thing. And there you go, it's done. And you have your first snapshot here. Now if you want to delete this, you can. If you wanna come back and change settings, you can. And uh, if you ever want to launch the wizard to create an on-the-spot snapshot, you can do this again. All right, go ahead and close that. And although not necessary at this stage, you may want to just restart your computer just for this time. So for number four, we're gonna change some recommended packages because it deviates slightly from Ubuntu, whereby Ubuntu installs the packages by default, Mint doesn't. So go ahead and uh, click on the bottom menu there go to administration, go to Synaptic Package Manager, and it's gonna ask you for your password. Go ahead and enter that. And then you're gonna to want to go to settings and preferences. And down here at the general tab, just tick consider recommended packages as dependencies. Click apply and then click okay. And then close that. We're not completely done here. You're gonna to need to change a setting from false into true. And the fastest way to do this would be through the terminal. So go ahead and uh, bottom click uh, on the menu and go to administration and scroll down to open a terminal. The other way you could open this fast is Control, Alt and T on your keyboard. And that will do the same thing. Or you can always click here and type in terminal as well. But I would advise you to learn the keyboard shortcut, Control, Alt and T. So go ahead and uh, just copy and paste this uh, command into the terminal. I will leave it in the description below for you. And uh, type in enter. It's gonna ask you for password. Go ahead and do that and press enter. And this has now changed false into true. But if you wanna double check that, you can always open up your file manager and go to file system, go to etc, go to apt, go to apt conf.d and uh, if you double click on 00 recommends you're going to see it has now changed into true okay cool so go ahead and exit all of that now we're going to install some drivers if it's applicable so for that go ahead and uh, click on the menu button and type in driver and you're going to have driver manager enter and input your password 
Now in our case here, all the drivers for my system has already been downloaded and installed, so it hasn't presented me with any drivers. If you do get some selections for drivers, make sure you create a time uh, snapshot before you do this in the time shift, okay? Especially if you have some specific NVIDIA graphics cards, you may need to do that. And if you do, make sure you use the closed source restricted driver here, the proprietary driver, okay? And if you have a choice, just pick the one that comes recommended by Linux. Now, next part may not be necessary if during installation you had already clicked uh, install third-party software for graphics, for example. But if you haven't, you can go to the menu button here and go to sound and video. And if you didn't, then here there will be something like install multimedia codecs, which you can click on and follow the um, steps. Okay, after this, there's an article I'm gonna link you if you want to optimize your solid state drive. It's a bit lengthy, but it might be worth doing. Next, we're gonna install some tools for system management. For example, for file management, we're gonna install Catfish. For that, open up a terminal and just copy and paste this command here and if you ask you for your password do that but mine's already open and do you want to continue select yes enter after this you should think about decreasing your swap use especially if you've got a low end system with two gigabyte or less but my system has 16 gigabyte uh, ddr4 ram so it's not really applicable here but if you have any problems on this if you have a very low system let me know in the comments below and i will show you how to decrease the swap on your ram next we're going to enable the firewall to do that all you need to do is type in sudo ufw enable or you can just copy it from the description paste it into your terminal and press enter and now it says firewall is active and enabled on system startup. UFW stands for uncomplicated firewall. And if you want to check the status of your firewall, you can type in this command, sudo UFW status verb dos, or just copy it and paste. And you should get something like this, say status active, logging on low, deny incoming, allow outgoing, disable. For most people, it should be fine. You don't need to change the settings. And if you ever wanted to disable the firewall, it's sudo space UFW space disable. And you can disable it like that. But I would advise you keep it as enable. And if you want further control on your firewall, you can type in sudo UFW show raw and you can get a list of commands you can feel free to read up and tinker with it next you're going to want to set your root password which unfortunately is not set by default for that you can type in sudo space passwd and i would advise you to type in the same password as your user account to reduce complications once and it's going to ask you to type in again it's invisible don't worry that's because of security and it says password updated successfully and last but not least you may want to go install a second browser as an addition to the firefox web browser default from linux uh, what did i do google chrome download and uh, click on any of the links and click on download chrome and you can select 64 bit for debian ubuntu and accept and install and you can either open it or you can save it to open later i'm just gonna choose to open it straight away and you can minimize this and it's gonna be done through the package installer and that's the one you can uh, read the details if you want and want to include the files so this is the chrome linux team version 78.0.3904.87-1 whatever the heck that means so click on install package asking for your password again and authenticate and give it a few seconds and once it's installed you're going to see down here it says reinstall package because it's done and if you want to go check that go to your menu button and go to internet and you should see google chrome there click on it and if you want to make it uh, your default browser that's up to you um, i might do that I, actually i'm going to leave firefox for now it's just going to open it up and voila you get chrome for good measure launch a terminal you can make that big if you want and type in sudo apt dash get update just do a final update input your password to complete the whole thing 
and you're done. For this post Linux Mint installation tutorial, I based it on an article from easylinuxtipsproject.blogspot.com, so all credit goes to them. Please go to the description for the link.